This is Matt here from New Gamer Nation, and with me is Ash, the game director for Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Uh, we just got some hands-on with the game, and it really looks awesome. I mean, we've got all sorts of stuff that we even have access to now. Yeah. Um, you know, the naval missions are expanded upon, and there's some underwater. What else can you tell us about the game? Uh, well, it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an AC game. Uh, but it's also a pirate game. This was something that we, we were pushing for from the beginning. Is to we, we always said we wanted to make the best AC game, uh, see what fans loved from previous ACs and re bring it back to life. But at the same time, we also wanted to make the, the best pirate game we can possibly make. So we looked at a lot of different references and we tried to see how can we take the naval that was in AC3, which was, you know, they were side missions, they were off the beaten path, uh, off the main story, um, and they were linear. So how do we take this and make it part of the open world? So, uh, so this is something that we worked on very hard to, to make sure that uh, it was one big world, lots of content, lots of locations, lots of stuff to do, but at the same time feel like a pirate game. You know, feel like that Edward, this our, our protagonist, that, uh, that he is an actual pirate and having mechanics that supported this and having systems that supported this. For example, boarding. We knew we had to, we couldn't, you couldn't do a pirate game without boarding. Put a lot of effort on this. So there's, there's a lot of stuff that we put into this. Um, I think uh, fans from the series will find a comfort when they play with Edward that yes, he does feel like an assassin, but at the same time there's a ton of new stuff and that he also feels like a pirate. This is, and this is something we play with in the story, actually. Uh, so yeah, so there's a lot to see. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway that I would want fans to from from these uh, discussions, from these interviews, is that uh, the Caribbean world it's it's massive, it's beautiful, it's the most unique world we've ever built, uh, and uh, and it's something we're very proud of, and we're really excited to have people actually play it and and feel it, and you know the promise we made, you know, it, it's real. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. Um we looked at some of the underwater missions, and you can see like bull sharks and manta rays and corals. I mean, it's yeah. an absolute gorgeous world. That, Thank you. You know, yeah. fans of the series like they they only see the above ground or inside of a castle or a keep or something. You know, they don't get to see the underwater until really now, and yeah. it's really unique. So. Yeah, yeah. The the underwater, you know, the the actual pirate era, the golden age of piracy started kind of underwater in a sense. What happened was there was this uh, Spanish uh, armada carrying tons of gold, leaving, uh, leaving from the Caribbean or the West Indies uh, to head to Europe. And through a, a massive hurricane, uh, the, this armada sunk and dropped all this gold underwater. And it attracted all these poor sailors who were there because of the war uh, between Spain and France and, and, and Britain. There was a war, so there's all these sailors that now are kind of jobless, just waiting on ships, and they hear that there's this huge golden fleet, and it's all underwater, and so they started diving deep and collecting the gold, and, and this is where piracy started. So we couldn't do a pirate game without having the underwater, of course. Um, and yes, uh, we, we've tried to put a lot of life into it, a lot of ambient life, a lot of, uh, a lot of things to discover and to find, and, uh, and, you know, and, and give something unique in the AC brand. Uh, so we're, again, it's it's uh, we couldn't do a pirate game without it. Now, one of the things we noticed was that I mean, the world is, is just massive. It keeps every game it gets larger and larger in scale and scope, which is always a good thing for the the players. Um, but one of the things we saw was the interactivity with the social aspect. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you could use your tablet or your phone to just kind of yeah. play with the game? Yeah, of course. So we have um, uh, we have a couple different things. I mean, on. Uh, on the PS4, people will be able to play remote uh, remotely with uh, a Vita if they have it. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, aside from this, we have a, a companion app that uh, it's a free download that you can get when uh, when uh, Black Flag gets released. Uh, it's a free app that allows you to connect to the game live. Uh, it shows you a world map. That's the most basic layout of it. Is you see the world map. It's live updates, so it shows you all the events that are happening around you. You can put mark markers on it. You can see, uh, you know, if someone's sitting next to you in the room, they can pinpoint stuff for you that's happening in the map, and you can see it live in the game. And that's the most basic part. There's a lot of extra additional features that come with this. You know, for example, uh, if you find a treasure map, uh, you can put that treasure map up on your companion app, so you can have it next to you while you're playing the game instead of bringing it up in the game. There's a lot of comfort features we put in. Uh, we didn't want it to be that uh, you needed the companion app to play the game to feel the real experience, but we wanted it to be uh, a comfort feature, something that you can have next to you that allows you to uh, play the game without having to go into menus, without having to uh, 
and you know go to the world map just to put a marker you can just do it by tapping the screen right. um, so we just wanted to make it very comfortable for players yeah one of the things I've always liked about um, the games I guess since Brotherhood is you know you kind of like build up a crew and a team send them out on missions and do stuff and now it seems like I can use this companion app to do that you know if I'm dropping a deuce you know, I can just like I don't have to be in front of my console to uh, to play the game. Even if I'm at work, I got five minutes to kill. I could either you know check out YouTube or I could you know. Send, That's the first time I heard that. That's the first time I heard that. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the other thing with the companion app, uh, it's true. I uh, you you reminded me is that the fleet. So yes, uh, when you plunder ships in the main game, you can send them to your fleet. Uh, you can access the fleet in the main game, and send them on missions to to plunder for you outside of the the, the West Indies. Uh, but if you have the companion app, you can actually dive deep into those uh, missions uh, and play the missions yourself. Uh, and so you can have uh, better success rates, you can make them uh, plunder more this way. Uh, so yes, we wanted, besides being comfortable, we also wanted it to be that you can actually walk away from the game if you're on the bus or if you're in the bathroom, to be able to, to keep uh, playing and, and plundering. Yeah, and, and then <clears throat> as soon as I'm done, I can just sync it up with my game, and I get all that experience back in my on my console, correct? Yeah, hopefully you wash your hands first, of but course, yes, yeah, uh, it syncs up properly. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, the game looks great. You know, I mean, I have to ask, you know, do you think Kenway is your favorite assassin so far? I mean, you might be a little bit biased, but... Uh, I'm extremely biased. Uh, for sure, uh, I, you know, I loved Ezio. Uh, he was, and Altair was the original, but Ezio was, he was super charming. I loved Ezio. But uh, there's something, I'm too connected to Edward to not love him the most. Uh, you know, one thing we did with Edward was we wanted to make an assassin who uh, had real human issues and human resolutions to it. So wh what I mean by that is, you know, when the game ends, you know, I always say it's, it's going to end in the most wonderful human way it could. He's not a superhero, you know, he's not, it's not going to be this, uh, uh, you know, he saved the world kind of event. but. I think people are going to really love the ending uh, because it's really human and it's really natural. Um, so I love Edward for that because we see a character who's very immature at the beginning, who's really just out for himself, and he grows. And that's what I love about Edward. He's also very charismatic and charming, of course, and, uh, and he has a way with people, which is really wonderful. So I, I love Edward. I love Edward. Well, that's great. I mean, I love the game already, and I can't wait to get my hands on awesome. it. Um, thank you very much for your time, Ash. Appreciate yeah, my pleasure. It. Thanks.